Uh, so, a quick email here from Samantha, who says that she has fat arms. Oh, oh, Samantha. I mean, a lot of people, so many of you, have a fixation with physical perfection these days. It's because we're bombarded with images of size Absolutely. zero models, an impossible ideal to attain. It is, abso absolutely. Uh, Samantha, I'm sure, I'm sure your arms are absolutely fine. She's, um, well, she's got an attachment here. So, oh, my God, they are vast. Th wow. Alan. That's... Uh, but she, you've got a lovely face, Samantha. She's got a, she's got a lovely face. Yeah. Uh, I've got to send this to Jonathan Ross. OK, and, uh, yeah, we've got a letter here from Lucinda. Uh, Lucinda says, I'm 45, but I'm going out with a 23-year-old man. Um, we clicked straight away, but although he's very affectionate, we're yet to make love and he cannot maintain an erection. And I'm worried it's my fault. What shall I do? Well, it's actually very common in younger men, much more so than people realise. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they, 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 these young men look all well and good uh, in the underpant adverts, <laughs> but uh, when it come, when they hit the hay... It's failure to launch. That, yeah, I like yeah. it. <laughs> well, sorry, sorry, come in here. What do, what do young women make of it all these days? Mm. Um, well, I suppose... I suppose it comes down to confidence, really, mm -hmm. doesn't it? Because I think a younger man can be a bit mm. too eager to please. Mm. They end up sort of at sixes and sevens. <laughs> <laughs> um, but And then a, an older man, you know, with some experience, is perhaps a bit more at ease with himself. Yeah. 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 And, of course, we're very fortunate these days. We have Viagra. <laughs> yeah, but although do not exceed the stated dose. So uh, you, you've suffered from that, have you, Alan? No, <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> no. Well, a, a lot of men have. I mean, it's nothing to be ashamed of. All right, what, all right, all right, once. But that was only because I'd already commenced foreplay when I remembered uh, I hadn't renewed my tax disc. But um, once I put a quick call into the DVLA, uh, lovemaking could begin in anger. I think it's all about making sure the conditions are right, mm. getting the mood right, the atmosphere. Oh, sure. Mm. I mean, I'm not going to. I'm. I'm not going to be embarrassed about this. Seeing, seeing as we're being trying to be, you know, growing up about this, there, there, there have been times when I've been more uh, rubbery than turgid. I mean, you can't just summon up uh, tumescence like room service. Yeah, and uh, you know, I think it's it's partly down to the woman to sort of help help set the mood a little, Absolutely. help man relax. Absolutely. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. I mean, it's all about mood. Uh, take the phone off the hook, mm -hmm. uh, put on some easy listening, Carpenters, Enya, and, of course, make sure the heating's on. OK. Uh, got another email here from, uh, from Paul in Swatham on forced celebrity breeding. Um, this one is Kylie Minogue and David Dickinson to make an Oompa Loompa. Absolutely. Uh, Minogue provides the size, Dickinson provides the requisite skin tone and expression. <laughs> Let's have some Alison Moyer. So, th so rare birds' eggs are being scrambled for Russian oligarchs and Bill Oddy goes apeshit. He shows up at Claridge's wearing his twitchers jerkin and the pockets are full of every conceivable explosive. I've got the picture. He walks in to the uh, buffet area, the breakfast buffet. People turn round. They say, "Isn't that the man from Springwatch?" Someone else says, one, "Wasn't he once one of the goodies?" Yeah, not anymore. Now he's a baddie. Seconds later, carnage. Oddy is like a bearded Catherine wheel scything through the crowd. Ironically, so the, the oligarchs wearing the leather jackets are protected from the worst of the blast, but a, an innocent couple from the northeast <laughs> on a city break are vaporised. Sorry, are you are you asking me a specific question? Yes. And that question is, is if, if an RSPB yeah. neo-fundamentalist yeah. was radicalised, yeah. uh, Oddie uh, sacrificed himself, yeah. and the, the rest of them holed up in Wookiee Hole and I was sent to neutralise the threat, yeah. how would I proceed? Simples. Do you uh, really want to know? Yeah, yeah, let's hear it. Like hand to hand combat, com commando style. Do you mind if I stand up? No, please. Take the floor. Take the floor. The floor is yours. You have right. the floor. So, in uh, Special Forces, we're, we're given licence to use bespoke techniques, improvised weaponry, that sort of thing. Uh, my favourite for hand-to-hand -hand combat is this brass knuckle, which I've adapted. I've stuck a protruding blade on one side, very sharp. What I would do is, I'd, uh, when I 
attack the first insurgent, punch him full in the face as hard as I could until I felt splinter of bone, that his nose was truly shattered. And then as he's toppling backwards, grab hold of him with your right hand and bring my hand back with the blade like an arc across his throat, severing one or preferably both of the carotid arteries. It's, you've got to be careful here because you've got to avoid the squirt of the jet of blood because, you know, you don't want to be blinded moving on to the next fella. It's, it's quite weird, this, actually, because uh, if you get it right, the, the neck opens up completely, yawns back like a Muppet's mouth. Oh, my God. So then you let them drop, <laughs> take care not to trip over them. I've seen that happen. And then you repeat and adapt, 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 until the cave is clear. It's very bloody, but it's quick and it's quiet, and that's why I like it. Any questions? No. Yeah, um, a witch muppet. You rejoin us on Mid Morning Matters. Tommy Gaskell, survival expert, still with us. And on lie two, we have Sophie. Sophie, what's your tongue twister? Did that man hurt the muppets? No, love, he didn't hurt any muppets. He simply dispatched um, some uh, terrorists from a radicalised RSPB in, in Wookiee Hole. Uh, it was simply that when he slit the throats of the bad people, they resembled the mouths of muppets. Hope that answers you. Did they get better? We cleared the cave. No. No, no one survived, Sophie. He cleared the cave. And when the man hurt the other men, did the man feel bad? Did you feel bad? It's my job. No, he didn't feel bad, Sophie. Spanning the length of the alphabet from A to Z, it's Alan and Zoe. But mainly Alan. Hmm. You're listening to Mid Morning Matters with Alan Partridge and my little pocket ray of sunshine, Zoe Scott. Speaking of sunshine, Alan, have you treated yourself to a sunbed last night? No. What about a spray tan? Um, I don't think so. Uh, morning, morning, everyone. You're listening to MMM with ZS and AP or Zap. I do, you've got such a lovely, engaging way with people. You really have. Seriously, it really is very commendable. Thank you. OK, so, today's... Up, got... we're, you're you... in a... <laughs> Do you know what? We, <laughs> we're like a, we are like an old married couple. Yeah, pr pretty soon we'll be bickering all the time. You know, you'll be drinking too much. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you, uh, yeah, and then you'll get jealous of my career and run off with a fitness instructor. No, thanks. Been there, done that, got the T-shirt. Uh, well, she got the T-shirt. Got the shirt off her back, really did. Fucking witch. <laughs> Well, I just found that when she strayed from historical fact into the realms of conjecture, I was all too aware of the author's hand, you know, and that took me out of the story. Uh, apart from that, I thought it was a very good first effort. Yeah, I've got to say, I'm a little surprised, uh, Crispin. I found that Mantle's main characters are scorchingly well rendered. Um, and the sharp clawed machinations are presented with non stop verb in a book that can compress a wealth of hey? incisiveness to, into a very few well chosen That's words. That's just word for word what it says on the back of That's the book. That's my that? book of the week. Uh, that's uh, Henry Mantle's Wolf Hall. Oh! <laughs> Can't wait to get my teeth into that. It sounds great. Oh, do you know what? If I'd known you were going to wear that kind of this kind of pink, I mean, I know enough about colours to know this pink clashes with that pink. Mm, correct? Not clash. It's, oh, just, it's not quite the same. This is raspberry, definitely. Yeah. What? How would you describe that? I would say that's like strawberries and cream. It is like that's it. It's like ice strawberry. It's like a, it's like a strawberry milkshake. Yes, it is. Like I would milkshake. drink you dry. <laughs> I would drink you dry. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. <laughs> I'm down to your boots. Oh, God. <laughs> okay. Can I have another? Oh. I'm still thirsty. Oh, Alan, you do really <laughs> remind me of my dad. You, you know, you'd really like him. Well, I've, I, I, I love dads. I've got, I, I, I am a dad. I've got a dad. Well, I had a, I had a dad. Oh, what was he like? 
What was he like, my dad? Uh, I remember one birthday he bought me this big red cake mm. in the shape of... A uh, 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 space uh, rocket? No. Uh, train? No. Football? Uh, uh, no, it was a rectangle. And um, I remember he came up and said, delivery for Mr Partridge. Oh. I was so excited. Mm. I banged into the table and, oops, the cake went everywhere. Oh. <laughs> uh, my dad uh, walked up to me in his blue 60s drainpipe mm. suit with a red bow tie he insisted on wearing. <laughs> and he said, um, he said, you will never amount to anything. He said, you're that to me. Imagine saying that to a seven-year-old kid. Alan, that's terrible. That's not the end of the story, because as he uh, turned round to storm off, he slipped on the cake, legs went flying, banged his head, and he needed 11 stitches. And I was glad. This is a little itty-bitty of scritty politty. Now it's time to return to Alan's sad stories. So things were going well between Gareth and I, but that was when our relationship took a twist that neither of us could have predicted. Shit! Shit! Shit, she writes, because... because... Gareth... died. But I married his twin brother because he had a twin brother um, who was identical. He had eyes like a cow too. So everything was back to normal again. <clears throat> um, until one day I discovered Gareth's brother in a compromising position with a box of Quality Street. He'd eaten three or four in sudden succession and completely ruined his appetite for the chicken dinner I'd so lovingly prepared. I was totally crushed. It was then I realised that Gareth's brother had a chock problem. Nothing would get in the way of his addiction. The lowest point came when I found him collapsed in a sugar-induced coma in the bogs of Yates's Wine Lodge in Yarmouth. We cried and cried that night. I reiterated my love for him, he reciprocated his love for me, and we shared a chocolatey kiss that will stay with me forever. But it was then that everything changed. Again. Because his weight had bloomed to 20 stone or thereabouts. When he came towards me to hug me, he fell on me and shattered my spine in three places. The police didn't believe him. And he was carted off to prison for GBH or attempted murder, I forget which. I still visit him once a week in prison. And he tells me, Alan, that he tunes into your show and it offers him great solace, great comfort. And uh, not that the show is aimed at the criminal fraternity in any way. Uh, the cons tend to listen to Orbital Digital, as many of them have learning difficulties. I should add, the reason I was able to visit him was because of a pioneering operation which enabled me to walk again because they replaced my spine with a new one made of carbon fibre, which is actually the material they use in the engine blocks and chassis for Formula One cars. It's actually lighter than aluminium. Yours sincerely, Deirdre. P.S. Uh, unfortunately, I can't remember what our favourite song was. Ah, what a sad story. OK, um, now, uh, t uh, please do keep your calls, texts and faxes uh, coming in on... Uh, today's big question, which is, how often should you wash your towels? Uh, Ted in Wisbeck has been in touch. I don't use towels. I use a hairdryer set on cool. It takes a bit longer, but it feels lovely. And I finish off with a little talc for my testes and bum. Mmm, lovely stuff. Alan, we're back on. With respect, Councillor, I think our listeners will be more concerned about cuts to public services. Well, absolutely, Terry, and that's why we've set out proposals Terry, to ensure... let me take it from here. Throw me the ball. Councillor, you talk a good game. I caught it, by the way. 
Um, but I have figures that show that you plan to cut public spending. Are you talking about the raw figures or the figures adjusted for inflation? Yes. Well, the, the first or the second? The, the, the first, the first, the first, the first, the first, the first, well, for God's sake. In that case, that, that's wrong, because if you look at the figures, the actual spend has remained the same as last year, see? Yeah. No, I understand it. I'm just, mm. uh, just checking it. Well, it's there. Yeah, that's fine. Another area where we've seen a, a great deal of public anger is in council housing. Mm. Now, mm. what is the proposal here? Well, I mean, I'm at the second. Sorry, I'm at the se I'm at the second one. What, when, you, uh, when you gave me the choice before, I meant the I meant the, the second cho choice where the figures are adjusted for inflection. Well, Alan, we've made no secret of the fact that we're not going to keep pace with inflation. In fact, it's inflation. one of the few issues that we have cross-party agreement on, so... Um, right. We've made no secret of the fact that we're bus, going bus, to have bus, to make... Bus, bus, fares. I'm sorry? Bus fares. Have you not put up bus fares? As we said in our manifesto, we won't be putting up bus fares in any... Ha have you put up bus fares? Not in real terms. Have you put up bus fares? In line with inflation, we have had to keep pace... Yes or no? Have you put up bus fares? In our manifesto... Have we you... Have you... Have you put up bus fares? We've only put up bus fares. Have you put up bus fares? Yes, but only yes, in but as much... You, yes, but you, yes, but you, yes, but yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Thank you. If you want to see that interview back online and see me getting a politician to admit something slightly different from what they said earlier and then no, saying, look, you said something slightly different from what you said earlier. No, and the, and uh, so, one nil. It's 10am. It's just after 10am. You have been listening to Alan Partridge with special guest Tory Bronwyn, Matthews... Who's Tory Councillor Bronwyn Matthews. Yeah, her, and what's your name? Terry Cohen. Terry Cohen. Uh, get well soon uh, to uh, Eddie Shadow. Shepherd. Uh, who I'm sure will get well uh, very soon. Uh, that's rhetoric, not a prognosis. Uh, right now, you're listening to Mid Morning Matters with Alan Partridge. See ya. Take a cup of personality, pour in some chat... And drink up some good company. I.e. mid-morning matters with Alan Partridge. Good evening, uh, morning, afternoon. Who cares? Who gives a flying monkey? Because uh, today we're talking about things you don't see much of anymore. Uh, already we have uh, capes, tinned meat, horlicks, sparrows, hula hoops, the crisps, not the toy. Uh, hula hoops, the toy, not the crisp. Uh, swimming pools with deep ends and asbestos. Um... Uh, we'll be asking, should we bring some and or all of them back? So do please text, uh, Twitter, spam, fax, page, write and or email. <laughs> <laughs>